Thank you so much for joining us here for today's panel, working in today's hybrid environment with Vice Media. So Tim, I think Hi. the best place to start is just to give everyone some background on how workflows at Vice Media have sort of evolved over the last few years, some of the challenges that you guys have been uh, up against. Everyone's been sort of running around over the years, sort of making all this content in many different ways. You know, our news teams go out all over the world and that content has to sort of come back in, be post-produced and get to, to either, you know, YouTube or O&O's or to our TV channel very, very quickly. The pandemic happened and I have to say before that, we'd already been looking at a strategy to move our workflows to the cloud. So, you know, initially, like most media companies, the editors went home, they took drives with them. Some people, you know, managed to go and swap media onto drives and replace the drives. And, you know, we had to get computers shipped to people's houses and things like that. So we started to look at some cloud solutions, uh, did some experimentation. Uh, and then we, ca then we came across LucidLink. And, you know, our growth into LucidLink from that point has been really fast. When Vice approached you about these challenges that they were facing and considering how they were going to shift things. How did you approach helping to find what the solution was? We really kind of came together on a lot of the uh, on a lot of the workflows, and I don't think we were really thinking about hybrid at the time, um, not immediately, because it just solved a lot of the remote workflows. And the the one thing I like to say is we kind of envisioned that this cloud architecture would just follow you wherever you went, mm -hmm. even though we weren't thinking about hybrid. We knew we'd eventually get there. Yeah, so Alex, like, what makes LucidLink unique in terms of how you address the, the Vice implementation? So what is unique is we make other people's cloud storage, hyperscale object storage like IBM, AWS, and Microsoft perform like a local disk. So what that means is your users can access the data from anywhere without having to download it in advance. And I believe that's one of the main reasons why they're able to work so quickly from a, a shared storage area, a single namespace, regardless of whether they're at home or in the office or in a virtual environment in the cloud. So that's something only LucidLink can do uh, within your workflow, so yeah. Your workflows, like what, what are your teams able to do now that they weren't able to do before? It took about a month to get the news team who operate uh, fast turnaround news content, potentially day of air content for, for news for them to adopt LucidLink and realize that it was the solution that would work. And they preferred it over the, the setups that they had, so much so that they switched production to it before we'd even really finished the POC. Uh, and that was sort of validation that it was working. It really enables us to be much freer about where content is created, which changes the collaboration process and, and who gets to be involved in that collaboration. It's no longer just specific to one office. It, it can really cross borders and we can have a team that is spread out. And as long as there's a structure to how editors are onboarded and how editors are hired, that they still get to work in, and collaborate on the projects. Is it's very, very easy to onboard users and it doesn't impact the way they prefer to work with their favorite applications like Premiere and After Effects and so on. So you mentioned it's very, very quick to deploy very, very easy to get user buy-in, and they can simply leverage all the native tools of the Adobe tech stack uh, directly from the LucidLink Fastbase. So. Whether or not you're local with a decent connection and you've got a Mac and that makes you happy, or whether or not you connect up in the cloud on some other platform, LucidLink remains consistent. And for me and Megan, the, the Adobe experience remains consistent. So I thought I'd point that out. Frame.io is part of your workflow uh, with the Adobe toolset as well. Can you talk about sort of how Frame comes into play for your teams? You know, we've been using it extensively for review and approve uh, workflows. Um, and yeah, you know, it's just it's just part of that. You know, it's used by post-production for review and review, producers, uh, execs in the company. Uh, so yeah, it's been an in inherent part of our workflows for some years. So what advice would you have as people consider sort of what how to, how to address uh, the, the challenges of remote, of hybrid working, of, of considering more, more cloud workflows? If I give any advice, I guess I'd say be willing to radically change the processes that you do now. And so do you really need to have a drive, an LTO copy, and then, you know, three <laughs> other copies friend. somewhere else um, where you may be duplicating effort? You might have been transferring it via another service to another office or something like that. 
And if you look at the process holistically, potentially it's actually more efficient when you go to sort of a cloud-based workflow. You know, you've talked about the architectural and the workflow kind of considerations. In terms of the people considerations, give them the tools that they need to be creative and take away the complexity of workflow, take away the complexity of copying drives and managing media and uploading and downloading. Give them Premiere, give them After Effects, and just give them Lucid Link. They can get to work doing what they want to do, which is being creative and uh, sending back some great finished content. Just trust me when I say, I mean, Adobe has is, is been really impressed with what they've done. They've been one heck of a partner, and, and as has Vice, to help us uh, you know, validate this. So just trust me when I say it works. <laughs> All right, well, please join me in giving a round of applause for our panelists. Thank you guys so much for being here.